Welcome everyone to a special debate hosted by the Weird Libertarians Network. I'm your moderator, Hody Johns, and I'm excited to bring you some very bright minds today. Today, we'll be discussing borders. I'm joined by debaters Trisha Stewart and Tyler420, who have graciously agreed to share their opposing viewpoints on the topic. Border control is a complex issue. If you think it's simple, then you're living in an echo chamber, and you should be prepared to hear actual intelligent people from both sides share their knowledge. Remember that the winner of the debate is not the one who you agreed with the most. It's the one who made you think the most. Both of the indiv these individuals have done a great amount of research about the topic, and the fact that they've come to different conclusions means that you should be open to all the information on this issue. I ask the audience to be respectful, thank them for their time and thoughts, and be genuine if you have further questions. If anyone harasses either one of them, you're unworthy to live in the basement that you dwell in. So let's go ahead and get this start started. I've asked the candidates to prepare some opening statements. Trisha, you have up to five minutes. Let's hear your opening statement. Well, number one, Hody, thank you so much for having me on. I'm never going to take five minutes up because I'm a very succinct person. Um, but I would say uh, that my position on open borders has come from somebody that came from the right and now I'm an anarchist. And so a lot of the ideas that I had that I realized were false were, led me into more research onto um, econ the economic argument against uh, closed borders. But also my main argument I want to say is going to be that open borders is the most capitalist and the most moral idea that's out there. So anybody that considers themselves a capitalist and a true free market champion that is for closed borders is sadly mistaken. And I might call you out Lou Rockwell. <laughs> messing with you on that one um maybe not if you want to come on my show you can but uh so it's based in the principles and the ideas that human beings own themselves that you cannot own somebody else and that the free movement of people through voluntary associations is a very libertarian principle and it's a very liber mi liberty minded principle and any corruption of that is a statist idea and so to say that you are liberty minded and uh, be for closed borders through government force is, well, you're just fooling yourself, basically. So that's the principle of my thoughts. Um, I can give you economic arguments about how um, the free movement of people is a net benefit for the American people and for society and is a true capitalist idea. And that's what I plan on doing today. Um, and I'm very thankful that Tyler has decided to come on here because we are not, uh, I would not say that we are the fanciest um, podcasters and people out there, but we've come on, yes, we've come on to Hody's Fancy Pants show. Hody is a Fancy Pants um, debate moderator. But anyways, that is my opening argument uh, because I'm going to leave it a little bit open so that we can maybe touch on the semantics of it later. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay, great. Tyler, you got five minutes and 10 seconds from what I understand. <laughs> oh, from my opening statement? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, hold on one, one, one second. Let me pull this back up here. My uh, my opening statement is definitely going to be a little bit more uh, more structured and written. Uh, so, okay. Uh -oh. <clears throat> All right, so hold on. Let me make sure I got this. There we go. Got it. All right, so many libertarians believe that the only legitimate borders should be the ones around private property. What we need to understand is the federal government has power over the border by the U.S. Constitution. Whether we like it or not, I'm sure most people would agree when I say they won't be relinquishing that power anytime in the near future. Because of this, Americans must choose the option that promotes and protects the most liberty, and this is not open borders. What I'll be arguing today is that closed borders equal the most freedom to Americans. And I'll explain how open borders would not only create more government, but will likely make it virtually impossible for a libertarian civilization to prosper. It's likely that I'll be hearing my opponent explain open borders in a hypothetical anarchist society. While I still would have disagree, that isn't the issue at hand today. This isn't a debate of anarchist versus state art, uh, status theoretics. This is an open versus closed border debate. What I find most frustrating with libertarians, especially those that consider themselves anarchists, is the endless theorizing. Theorizing is good, but at some point we need to look at policies more practically and determine which laws and legislations we can put into effect now as opposed to 10, 20, or 50 years from now. 
It's irrational to assume that we can go from our current state in the U.S. to an anarchist state all at once. I'm not interested in hearing the ideologies of an anarchist utopia that requires various steps over numerous years to acquire, if even at all. Instead, I challenge my opponent to argue how open borders would currently work today. To argue for open borders, you would also have to argue the abolition of the welfare state. And while I'm sure that most of us can agree that the welfare state should be incinerated and buried, achieving both in the U.S. is a pipe dream. Most Republicans oppose open borders, just as most Democrats oppose removing welfare programs. To argue that both parties in the House and Senate would somehow be willing to vote against something that is so deeply embedded into their separate ideologies is nothing more than wishful thinking. Even if you could somehow find that mystical unicorn to bring the tribes of the forest together, I would have you consider this. Immigrants currently make up a quarter of all poverty in the country, not to mention 21% of all black Americans are at or below the poverty line as well. Black Americans also commit homicides at 267%, the national average. Combining this with the removal of welfare programs and adding in an open border policy that will allow migrants to flow in with no social safety nets will only lead to an astronomical increase in murder, theft, and robbery. According to research administered by Gallup, roughly 147 million people worldwide would move to the United States if they could today. And according to Public Policy Institute in California, 74% of immigrants are likely to favor and vote in bigger governments with more services. The obvious question then becomes, how would that push libertarianism forward? The answer is it wouldn't. It's clear that uh, that would only further the blockade against our core objective, which is liberty. Not to mention that because of the unlikelihood that the welfare state will dissipate, flooding our borders with immigrants will only increase the welfare state, adding more children to public schooling, consequentially increasing taxes. Keeping the border closed prevents foreign voters from tipping elections in their favor and blocks a foreign totalitarian culture from taking over. There are no superior races of people, but there are superior cultures. Yes, I believe that America has a great culture compared to many other countries. I don't want to invite all of Somalia to live in the U.S. where 95% of girls face female genital mutilation. I don't want to invite all of Afghanistan to live in the U.S. where a woman that cheats on her husband could be stoned to death. In Afghan and Lebanon, uh, it's currently legal to rape your spouse. So do you believe that these cultures are equal to ours? Of course, I would like to help as many refugees as possible, but not at the risk of letting in people that, uh, that oppress them in the first place. This is why we need to monitor and vet the flow of migrants into the country. Not to mention that the U.S. has many enemies, and it does not matter if you believe that we started it or they did. The fact is we do. PolitiFact estimated that 19% of Muslims in the world are likely to be extremists. When you have roughly 1.6 billion Muslims worldwide, that equates to 300 million radicals that are dedicated to the death and destruction of Western civilization and its inhabitants. These are people that open border advocates will ultimately allow in. Personally, the question I would ask regarding would-be citizens is, are they coming from a culture of liberty? If not, why would we blindly assume that they will preserve liberty? Would you import thousands of communists into the country? How would that make sense for a group of people that want less government? And to answer the question I'm sure most have, yes, I'm advocating for government workers with guns to prevent the unauthorized from touching down on our nation, because I believe that some ends do justify the means. So I would ask everyone listening, are you willing to risk the country and its freedoms that you currently have just to hold on to a purist position on open borders? Okay. Uh, we'll get into all of that. Uh, Trisha. There's like 4,000 points there. there they, he got off a <laughs> bunch. Got <laughs> so, uh, yeah. tr so we're going to start. I, I asked the candidates to, or the candidates. I asked the debaters to write questions for mm -hmm. each other. So, Trisha, we're going to start with you. Tyler had actually two questions for you, and he generously donated his third question to the We Are Libertarians audience. Uh, so you're going to get three questions from him. You'll have three minutes to respond to each one, and then he will issue a three-minute rebuttal afterwards. So question number one, Trisha. With the absence of discrimination towards cultural differences at our borders, what is stopping millions of communists from entering our country and voting in socialist policies? Well, number one, you have to start with the premise that voting makes a difference um, in culture. And then you have to uh, also start with the premise that culture can change uh, what the government does. These two things are false. So 
I can't argue that point being as it is a false premise. So um, communist ideas, number one, uh, we live in the largest empire in the world that is the most coercive and possibly I would say socialist empire. So to think that um, we are not the same as them is, is quite different. And then also culturally, I did a little research on, you know, how things change culture and people come in and wanting entitlements. It's actually really a false premise. Um, so what Tyler's probably going to do is throw out a lot of false right winged ideas of the premise that these people are coming over to change culture and take things. And that's actually quite untrue. In fact, if you look at research, um, immigrants and even illegal, and I use that term loosely, um, immigrants do not change culture. The, pretty much one of the only reasons that they vote Democrat. And um, I would go to the point that voting Democrat or Republican is the same thing. You're still going to get the same person in office. Um, the reason they do that is because of border control and not because of entitlements. Um, and so if you look at open border societies where uh, they let the free movement of people go in and out, it's not a cultural issue. A lot of people point to like Great Britain and this influx of this, um, I want to say a Muslim or uh, Islamic culture. That's a very different animal because of the fact that they're a closed border society. So, um, a lot of the things he re he's referring to, I just reject outright because of the premise of it. Um, what was the second point to the question that he asked me? So the discrimination towards cultural differences at the borders, and then what is stopping millions of communists from entering our country and voting in socialist policies? Well, um, we already vote in socialist policies because we're a socialist nation. So I'm not really sure where the argument is there. I just kind of disagree with the premise of it. Um, the entire... Um, taxation system in the United States is socialist. And then, um, you know, most of the people that take entitlements are legal American citizens. So we kind of already have that mentality. I'm not really sure why the free movement of people would affect that. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, his next question, are you willing to admit that you would violate the non-aggression principle in circumstances that benefit your own self-interest? And if you would, how is it then any different than violating the non-aggression principle to enforce closed borders? I would not. <laughs> That's it. I just won't do it. Okay. I'm a principled so, person. So you <laughs> that would was not... an easy one. All right. That's softball, Tyler. <laughs> you would not violate the, the non-aggression <laughs> principle. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would not. Okay. Absolutely. I, I cannot initiate violence. I abhor violence. I won't do it. Okay. Uh, question number three, the okay. Louis audience, uh, yellow fever and tuberculosis once wiped out huge populations of America and afterwards Americans mm -hmm. screened for new immigrants at Ellis Island for having diseases. This saved tens of thousands of lives, most likely hundreds of thousands or even millions of lives. Would you also oppose the same protective measures today? So what I would say in my ideal society, I'm not going from a purist standpoint, which he thinks that I will. I would still say I'm pragmatic enough to know the world we live in. So I don't, I do not think necessarily that the Ellis Island version of immigration is, I, I think it's better than what we have. I mean, people wait 18 years and have to be rich basically to get into this country. And I think that is a better version of the immigration policy we have now. I do not necessarily think it is a violation of the non-aggression principle to say you have an infectious disease and you can't come here. Um, I think any private uh, organization that did security or border control would probably do the same thing. So I'm pragmatic enough to think that that's okay. I, I, I'm not an idiot. I think he thinks that I'm going to come from the standpoint of, you know, anarchy, free for all. Well, you know, but it, it would be a heck of a lot better than what we have now. So I'm not opposed to that as being a, a means to an end, because obviously we don't live in a stateless society. And I think that would definitely be a function of a private security company or border control company. Okay, uh, Tyler, you have three minutes to issue a rebuttal on anything she just said. Sure, so um, regarding that, you said that uh, you would not violate the NAP, correct? Yes. For your own self-interest, okay. So I, 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 have, a, I have a question for that. If you had, uh, if your child wandered onto my property for whatever reason and began to drown on my property, would you not violate the NAP to save your child? Or 
Would you allow your child to die just to hold on to that purest ideal? That's a stupid question. I really hate the question because you know what hypotheticals. You know what's going to happen if somebody comes onto my property. No, and if their kids your drowning, child, number one, I'm going to pull their kid drowning. out before I worry about the violence. I'm not talking now. about you. I'm talking about me. <laughs> Dumb. If, if your child is drowning on my property, would you not violate the NAP to save them? I'm not an NAP purist. It's a good guideline. Okay, Tyler, so that, that's just like a so you basic would you argument. Wouldn't. You would or you wouldn't? I do not think that saving a child's life and crossing somebody's private property lines is immoral. So I'm always going to do what I think is moral. Okay. That is so, just such a basic so, argument. So can I'm we just so can we just can we just strike for the record that she refused to answer the question in yes or no and that she obviously would violate the NAP. Otherwise she would allow her child to die on my the property. The NAP is not my God. Okay. I, I'm not saying it's your God or not. What I'm saying is is that you said you would not violate the NAP. But now you're refusing to answer if you would. You're, no, no, no. You're defining what the non-aggression principle is. That is the non-aggression principle. That's, that's what it is. That's Private property. If is. you are going on to my property without my permission, does that not violate the NAP? Okay. Do you think that that gives you. Yes um, or no. Yeah, yes. Do you or think no. that gives you permission to kill me? To kill who? Okay. So if I'm going to wander onto your property, what are you going to do about it? If I'm trying to save my kid. I'm, I'm not saying that I would do anything. I'm asking well, if no, you. No, 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 no. This is pertinent to the NAP. question. This is pertinent. Would you kill me for trying to save my child? That's irrelevant. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's completely relevant because it, that's it's, real it's, human it's interaction. Irrelevant. I could just stand there and say, no, you cannot come onto my property to save your kid. I could just say that. Silly That's question. All I need so to say. let me let me let me step. <laughs> I will step in real quick though. So Tyler, let's just say yes. She would say she would go on your property and save her kid. What is your point? My point is is that well, one that she's a hypocrite because she's saying that she wouldn't violate the NAP, but now she would violate the NAP because it works. You don't in her get own to corner entry. me like that. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. So not only that, because this this is my time. So anyway, so not only that that she would violate the NAP hypocritically in her own self-interest, but on top of that, that is no different, no different than me advocating to violate the NAP to close down the borders. Because no, it's completely it's different. Border. It's Holy not. Holy cow, one person is trying right. to save a child, one person is seeking vocation. 100% the what same. What in the world? You would violate the NAP not. either way. You violate it just for your own self-interest. That is three minutes. Uh, we'll, we will, I'm sure, wow. I'm sure we will come back to that when, when you have open discourse with each other. She doesn't have anything else to say. I think we're done. So, so <laughs> I, I think you might, you might be surprised. Tyler, uh, we're going to give, we're going to give you three questions that Trisha has for you. Oh damn. I didn't get to attack any of the other things. I wasted my three minutes. You could. Yeah, you did. You're good. Uh, all right. So, uh, question one, she has for you, what financial benefit do closed borders have on you directly? What financial benefit do closed borders have on me directly? Well, I guess I would, could answer that by saying by having closed borders and by, um, making sure that the flow of illegals do not enter the country, that that goes, uh, that, that protects the more uh, welfare programs that are being used. They actually had a study that illegal immigrants, just illegal, not even, you know, whatever, illegal immigrants that are in this country, 67% of them um, use some sort of welfare program. And as we know, the welfare program is funded by us. Okay. Uh, question number two, what specific qualifications or criteria should a legal immigrant meet? Um, I think it goes back to, to what I said is that, um, you know, we have to look at if they are coming from a culture um, of liberty, if they're coming from a culture of freedom, um, you know, because freedom is downstream from politics. I, I was watching uh, one uh, lady. She was great. And she was talking about it. And, she, and it was totally right that uh, culture is downstream from politics. So just to even say, to even argue that our culture is not superior to other cultures. I'm not saying every culture, but to say that our culture is not superior to other cultures, to say that any culture is not superior to another is, is just, it's just fucking retarded, right? So you're saying that cultures where they allow the rape of women or the cutting off of hands for stealing a fucking apple, you're saying that that culture is in no way worse off than the culture that we have. That is that you are living in some fantasy delusion, 
that I would not want to be part of that psychosis. Okay. Question number three. What potential dangers do you foresee with an open border policy with Mexico? Uh, an open border. Well, for one, Mexico uh, has for as far as um, the amount of American travelers to any destination, any country in the world, the most amount of American deaths happen in Mexico. Right. So obviously Americans aren't safe in Mexico. So why are we saying that bringing Mexico to uh, America is somehow going to be safe? Right. See, my whole thing is and, and here's here's the biggest thing that I think people don't understand is that. When, when we're talking about closed borders, very few people that are for closed borders are just for shutting down the border completely and not allowing anyone in. That's not what I'm advocating for. I'm just advocating for that we want to make sure that we maintain the culture that we have here today. And when I say culture, I don't mean white or black or Hispanic. What I'm saying is, is that we live in a society right now that allows us the freedom to even have this debate. There are countries where we couldn't even have this debate, especially not Trisha. If a woman was on here speaking her mind, she could be fucking murder right so even just having the ability to have this debate is is a blessing man it's freedom this is what liberty is it may not be the ultimate liberty that we want like as libertarians yet but it's definitely better than a lot of other countries and seeing as what's going on in mexico no i would not want the free flow of of mexico to come through here just as i wouldn't want the free flow of somalia to come through here i think you muted yourself yeah. Trisha, yeah. you've got three yeah. minutes to issue a rebuttal for anything Tyler just said. Well, Tyler deals with this premise that um, we have this culture of liberty here. And maybe there is. I'm, I'm fortunate to live in this country. Um, I'm fortunate to be uh, not a victim of foreign domestic or foreign policy, but domestic policy. Um, the, the idea that Mexico itself would import some weird anti-liberty policy is funny because what they are fleeing is actually quite, it's very much relatable to what we are doing to them. So we as United States um, police the world and we replace dictators and we bomb people and we destroy things. And then when they want to come here so that they can just feed their children, we say you're not about liberty. We are not about liberty. We are the most anti-liberty, largest, statist, socialist, aggressive force on the earth. Lies. And for us, how is that lies? Lies. Please name another country that has more tentacles so in the world than all, we do. The, name the, one. The, argue, the argument that you're giving me is, is and it's under the false premise that I would discriminate solely against Mexico. I think that there okay, are you benefits. You just said Mexico I, is going to bring their shit here. Why? I do didn't you say Mexico is going to bring their shit here. here. I said, I said South facts. Americans are I said up here? facts. More Americans are murdered in Mexico. That's all I said. Right? Why do you think that is what, so? Do you even what, understand what I, the drug war? What I said. Do you even understand our cannabis? If I could answer, if, if I could if answer. We, ask me a question. If, we, if I could answer. Wait, 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 Tyler. If you're going to add like three questions. Did not run guns and fuck with the drug war and do what we did do you think any of those people would give a shit it doesn't about matter it doesn't and if they matter. did who cares that, could, that couldn't if matter less it does here, not matter how we got there it doesn't matter if we shot first they shot first that's irrelevant all that matters now is where we currently your arguments are falling so all, bad. All, I'm really disappointed not. <laughs> all you're doing is throwing up your hands and saying oh my god that's not a good argument because you don't know how to answer you don't know how to challenge it. I'm going to push so, on pause, try, Tyler. Yeah, Trisha, you've still got another minute here. Okay. We'll, 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 so, I will allow you to rebut, rebut her rebuttal in a minute, Tyler. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what I am saying is that um, even regardless if they're legal or illegal, this whole cultural thing and people trying to bring some sort of socialist, we are the nation, we are the largest nation in the world and we're the most socialist. It's a mixed market. Um, we fund everything we do through theft. And so- the reason a lot of people want to come here is because we're not we the largest nation market. in the world. Uh, uh, Tyler, let her finish. Uh, we have the most tentacles. I'll we let, have the busiest I'll, government. We I'll are let, the busiest government. I'll let you argue. I'll let you hash out the facts in a minute. These are all lies. You get to say whatever you want. She gets to so, say even lies for the next 30 seconds, Tyler. Okay. But I'm going to bring you the truth, baby cakes. Yeah. Um, so these people are migrating to the U.S. because um, – of this situation in their countries. A lot of the reason that their countries are in this situation is because our foreign entanglements and our interventions in these countries. 
I'm not saying it's 100% responsible, but the largest empire in the world has tentacles that reach far and deep. And if you dismiss that as a force of the biggest economy in the world, the, the largest war state in the world, and you don't think that us through overthrowing dictators and, and um, invoking a drug war has anything to do with it, that's so silly. Okay. And, and if you fear people moving for cheap labor, what, what in the world? It's <sighs> just so stupid. It's so anti-market. It's so free trade. All right. So, Trisha, it, I've got another three questions for you now. These questions are from me. They're the toughest oh, questions. Hi, Odie. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. They're the toughest questions that I have on the issue. Oh, shit. Personally. So, <laughs> okay. here's my three questions for you, Trisha. Number one, mm -hmm. you got three minutes again for these. While it is true that crime rates along the border are actually less overall, rates of human sex trafficking, underage prostitution, rape, burglary, and murder are all higher. Mm -hmm for border cities than the rest of the nation. The primary difference in these numbers is largely due to the immig illegal immigrant particip participation. What solution do you have for those who who live along the border and that are affected by this activity? Well, I would say number one, private security. So um, a lot of people make the assumption that because I am for open government borders that I'm for um, like unlocking your house, which is really stupid. Um, I'm definitely a fan of security. And then I would also say that the government is completely complicit in these crimes because what they're doing is making it very easy to have a black market for, for um, sex trafficking, uh, drug trafficking, or, you know, just the black market is a product of government. It really is. And so I would say uh, freeing these uh, channels up and making it easier for people who maybe and I, I disagree with this morally, but maybe want to sell sex for money or maybe want to sell drugs for money. If we can make that legal, then um, we don't need to worry about these uh, forces that fight against government, these black market forces. Um, the, you don't see the owner of Anheuser-Busch fighting the owner of Milwaukee, whatever, because they're legal. Um, and so regardless if you agree with you know, sex trafficking, sex work, um, drugs, if they were legal and borders were open, these crimes, they, they wouldn't have to exist. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. They look at crime as what the government classifies as crime, and they don't understand it's just a byproduct of having a closed market. So that's what I would say about that. Black markets, free markets. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Question okay. number two. The president okay. has a constitutional duty to protect the nation from enemies, both foreign and domestic. Until the constitution is either changed or removed, the position does not have the option, or that, that position doesn't have the option of just ignoring this task. What do you propose the president do in order to fulfill his obligation to protect the citizenry from potentially violent foreigners? Um, so I would say, uh, obviously, I think the Constitution is authoritarian bullshit. However, like I said, I'm pragmatic and I understand it. And actually, I used to be a big constitutional conservative. So what I would say that he should not do is what he's doing and what the previous sitting presidents have done since, I guess, probably before the 1860s, um, is not uh, uh, be able to declare war without congressional consent. Um, so maybe that might be a good start. Um, and then also, it, it, if you look at it through the, a lens of the Constitution, his authority relies not on himself, but on congressional um, approval. And so maybe not um, making sanctions around the world, um, maybe not getting involved in foreign entanglements where we're overthrowing dictators or we're sending troops um, <coughs> without congressional consent into countries and pretty much just fucking with what's going on, that would probably like solve 90% of our problems. Maybe not backing Saudi Arabia, one of the biggest aggressors in the Middle East, um, that are pretty much, um, they're, they're killing children at a rate that's larger than the Holocaust right now. Like they're probably, so if we just got ourselves out of all that and stopped aggressing and even if the president just stopped saying stupid shit, like, you know, threatening North Korea. Yeah, North Korea is small. They're not going to do a lot of stuff. Um, maybe not flying uh, bombers over Iran. Maybe if he just worried about 
the country and stopped doing what the fuck he was doing, we'd be in a much better position. And so the president can stop agitating and can stop um, having power or using power that's not actually in his authority, although it doesn't really matter because a piece of paper doesn't really give authority. So <laughs> anyways. <laughs> sure. Uh, question number three. Okay. While the average immigrant, legal or illegal, is less of an economic burden on the American than the average taxpayer, this measure is only true among those who are already here. There are 12 million people applying to immigrate that, according to economists, would be far more of a burden on the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. uh, opening our borders entirely would almost assuredly make our debt, which is already high, spiral out of control entirely. What is your solution to this problem? Well, I would say that there has to be an incentive for them to come here. And so um, if our economy is crap and no one's offering them a job, they're not going to stay. And if they're here illegally, um, ironically, they can only get certain benefits. And um, so it, there's just not a lot of incentive. And also the fact that it's really difficult to immigrate here. I just think, I think that's a really poor argument. Um, otherwise, like, people would have been doing that since the beginning of time. I mean, even Mexico is on a decline for immigration. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't think that- That's because they're already here. They're, they're already here, that's that's why. That's why yeah, I'm, but they're not benefit they're while they're here, so it doesn't really matter. They're not benefit. 67% of them on welfare. They're benefiting. 116 billion welfare cost. They're, uh, they're, they're on welfare, they're benefiting. Hang on. Like some numbers, Tyler? Hang on. Ready for some numbers? We, we, <laughs> You got another two minutes of her time, and then you, you get to unleash for three minutes, Tyler. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> or were so, you were you finished with the question? I'm sorry. Keep going, Trisha. Yeah, no, I'm good. I don't oh. ramble. Okay, uh, Tyler, you have three minutes to issue a rebuttal. Um, I don't really have much. I mean, there there wasn't there wasn't a lot of tangible things there for me to for me to re rebut. So, I'm 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 pretty much good. I also want to say that I don't I don't oppose cheap labor. Uh, I heard Trisha say that. I don't oppose that. Um, there are many um, uh, uh, benefits of having people, especially people, it depends on where they're coming from and what their, their skill set is, right? So people that are coming in from Mexico, uh, their typical skill set is that of uh, just same as like black Americans that we have now. It's, it's more low skilled labor, which is fine. You know, more construction and, and, and labor jobs and things like that. I, I'm not against that. I think that that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, that's a good thing. I just think opening the borders, you see, here's, here's what a lot of people also do too, which you'll, you'll catch them doing if, if you pay attention. When people argue open and closed borders and people that are for open borders, most of the time, they only want to compare us to Mexico. Oh, well, Mexico, when they come in and whatever, sure, Mexico, fine, absolutely. We're not building a we wall talk, on Canada, how about, Tyler, how about, irrelevant. How about the 35% of Hondurans that would come here? How about that? 35% of them want to come over here to America. How about people that are coming from Afghanistan, from Iran? Are we saying, see, to say that some oh, cultures are not superior to other cultures as far as just liberty goes is so inaccurate that it's laughable. And it's almost when people don't even understand that it, it's it's trying to argue a delusion. Like, it's, Hody, it's Hody, can I address that? Well, he's, it's technically his time, but I, if he will I, allow I, you the time I, to address I, that, you I, might. I advise you, I advise you to, to go quite ahead. A bit. Okay. I, I've given him quite a bit of my time. So can okay. I rise up? Can you see, can you see how Trish I is want, mad? We're compromising. I want, I want to address <laughs> she, this she don't issue that he keeps bringing up, and that is this cultural, um, somehow being culturally superiority. So I want to understand what his definition of cultural superiority is. My definition of cultural superiority is the most amount of liberty. Any 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 <laughs> culture that has United more States? liberty. Oh my god. Us compared to funny. Somalia, yes, that is us. Us compared to Iran, yes. Us compared to Syria, yes. That is what that is. But do you understand that's because we're lucky enough to happen to be uh, birthed in this country because right, our because tentacles. We made the country this. No, we didn't. What did you do for this it country? Is. I wasn't born back then. Um, what about I'm, what we I'm do everywhere delivery. else but here? You're not. What about what we do everywhere else but here? Like we what? Destroy nations. So 
oh, aren't we lucky? We have this cultural security. Like what? You're just saying we destroy nations. Let's be specific. Who, who are you okay, talking about? The Saudi black, uh, we, we're backing the Saudis and the Yemeni. Um, I don't, I don't much. agree. I don't agree that we should police the world. No, I would never advocate. Uh, we that. are in. I think it's two hundred ninety-eight countries right now. Um, we have our hand in every country, every continent, overly um, involved. We move uh, political processes. We overthrow uh, leaders. We manipulate banking systems. We overborrow. We are like the worst people in the world. Our culture is shit. Tyler, I'm going to let you address what she just said. We are at three sure. minutes, but just take, sure. if you want to quickly address what she just said, and then I've got yeah, three, three questions for you. So, what, I, what I would say to that is I would say I, I don't advocate for the slaughtering of other nations. No, or you're just cool with the production so, of it for uh, us. If, if, I don't know, the, I don't know if you heard here, Hody. We're fine. I, I don't know if you heard Hody, my time. So I, I don't I don't advocate for anything like that. What I, and, and I would want to pull our troops back, and I don't want us to police the world. I don't think that it's right. Not at all. But that is a completely separate issue. It is not at all. In this country. She just can't refrain herself, can she? That we're I talking can, about baby. what's in this country. If yes, and it's direct result country, of so us. Hold on. Are Hang you on. arguing? The world. Are you hold on real quick, Hody? I need to ask this. Are you arguing that we are not more free in this country than many other countries? Are you arguing that? I'm saying we are because and that's it. We done. She no, agrees. I'm saying we are because okay. we decimate other people, and that's immoral. Okay. Immoral. Uh, it, Tyler, uh, a warlord can yes. be free as he you, wants to be. You yes. all are, are doesn't about, make him right. You're like doesn't make him right. You guys are make about ten minutes away American from a back and forth where I'm going to let you go against my better Mega. judgment. Mega. But <laughs> first things first, Tyler. I got it three. Be lit. It I got be three lit. questions for you. <laughs> okay, so number one, in order to make the wall a reality, Who there are asking questions. Who there, are these? Oh, these are from the fans. Oh, this is, these are my questions. So the okay. second set that Trish answered from Funny me, things. these are from me. Okay. Yeah. So number one, in order to make the wall a reality, there are huge obstacles in the way. It is internationally illegal to build within 20 miles of the Rio Grande. Also, much of the property along the border is private property, and even President Trump has said he would have to use, this is a quote, militant imminent domain, unquote, to make the wall happen. Would you be willing to seize property and break international law to make the wall a reality? I would not. I do not believe in eminent domain. I think that is a huge violation of people's rights. So I do not agree with that. I don't. Ju and here's here's another thing too. I don't pretend to know the answer to everything. Like I know one percent of one percent of politics, right? There are so many, so much more that I learn from people, like talking with people like Trish and talk with other people that have opposing views, and it gets me thinking of, well, what could the solution be? But I also want to say, just because I may not have the answer, or maybe I disagree with that, I don't agree with eminent domain, does not mean that I think that there is no answer. There's some answer that I haven't come up with yet or that I haven't found that makes sense yet. Um, so anyway, no, I do not believe in eminent domain. Um, however, I would also need to see the research um, because off of certain research that I did before in the past, it showed that people along the border would actually be willing to give up that property if they were to get property somewhere else or they weren't along that border. So if they are voluntarily saying, yes, we're okay with you taking our land, then I don't find any issue with that. Okay, uh, question number two. Currently, the ability to accept and deny foreigners is a task designated for the federal government. A controlled border would allow or deny passage based entirely on the approval of the president. Would you respect the order of a president to deny, to deny passage entirely or allow all entries entirely, even if your opinion differed? So... I, I believe that, well, first of all, <laughs> the president does have that. Sure, you can say that the president has the say over it, but the president is not the say all to say alls. He can't just do anything. Contrary to a lot of popular belief, he can't do any fucking thing that he wants to do. Right. So. Um, so, yes, but I do believe, yes, the U.S. Constitution does say um, that he has that power to to instill that. Not him specifically. It just says the United States. But sure, that he has the position to do that. Um, what I would also say is America has a – we have a, a vested interest in protecting our people, right? Just like say that if you were a business owner and you had 100 uh, 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 workers that work for you, right? You have 100 employees. If you found out 
that outside uh, parties were harassing your employees, maybe assaulting your employees or whatever, you have a vested interest in keeping them safe. <laughs> These people are not your friends. They are not your family. I'm not even using that analogy, right? These are just your employees. You have a vested interest in keeping them safe. So yes, would you not take whatever measures you needed to take to ensure that they still come to work, to ensure that they still contribute, right? So it, it's the same thing with the U.S. government. They have a vested interest in protecting our, our citizens. Okay, question number three. Factoring in taxes, GDP contribution and welfare, the average American worker, costs the U.S. over $14,000 every year, while the average undocumented worker costs the U.S. just over $10,000 a year, even according to the Fair Institute. On top of this, economists agree that their cheap labor con con contributes a lopsided amount to the GDP, 3%, and, and helps keep things like foods and fossil fuels much cheaper than they would ordinarily be. How do you economically reconcile your stance? So I think this is going under the premise that I believe that money is just the say all for, for everything. I wouldn't sell my morals for $500, right? So it doesn't matter to me if the, if immigrants coming in are, <clears throat> uh, are, 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 are contributing less or illegals. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if they're contributing less. What, what I'm, what I'm arguing is, and that's good. I'm glad that they are that that's awesome. We could fucking learn something from that. Right. So I think that that is good. What I'm arguing is is the culture that we have in the United States. That that's my that's been my whole mm, argument. There my it is. Argument, my argument is is that we need to vet and make sure that we are bringing the right people over, right? Mm. Hang, on, oh, hang, on, Lord, hang on, hang on, Trisha. Not having, hang on, Trisha. They are, Trisha, you're not two minutes away. Hang on. The same problems, right? Most of most of the people that are coming here right now. Uh, that are that are immigrants. Seventy percent of them are coming from Asia, and they are coming from Latin American countries. We're not seeing the same issues that we would have if they're coming from certain European countries. We're not having the same issues if they're coming from Syria, Somalia, Iraq, Iran. We're not having those issues, right? So it's even it's silly what to issues? even argue. What even it's are you even, talking it's silly about? To even argue that, right? The cultures are completely different. They are completely different. Okay. All right, Trisha, you have three minutes to issue a rebuttal. That means she'll have seven. No, I've actually um, relegated my time to you. If you look back, but I know math's not everybody. Your everybody's everybody. Um, we're about fair here, everybody. <laughs> three minutes to okay. respond, and then after that, we're going to do open forum. We got about we got about five minutes after okay, that for you guys cool. to do a back and forth. Go ahead, Trisha. Um, so you bring up this point about cultural things, because obviously the economics don't argue in your favor. And these are based on like various data numbers. So they're, they're not, you can't I argue. Think, I don't think I argued many economics other than the welfare. No, you state. didn't. I think, I think um, I, actually, I brought and, that and up. The welfare state is actually, it's kind of, it's less I, than a wash actually. It's I, a I agree. I agree. With those things, so. um, but you keep talking about this cultural thing. I, I really don't understand uh, what you think this cultural thing is. Uh, do you think that people will come here and you not buy Anheuser Busch, or because I don't I think I'm not sure what this cultural thing is that America is. America is the most dominant oppressive force in the United and the world, um, and so I don't understand what you're saying. Our culture is. Do you think that we're taste. oppressive here? You think we're oppressive here in the United yes, States? Yes, for sure. Who yeah. do we oppress here? Um, every American tax. Are you, are you, are you oppressed? <laughs> do you feel oppressed? Uh, yeah. You do? Um, I just had to give up 33% of my income. Um, I do you can't... feel more or less oppressed here than you would in Somalia? That's, that's, that's a moot point. It's, it's, I'm talking, it's we're not. talking about America. You can't do comparisons. You're saying you just said culture. You said you don't understand. I'm trying to break it down for you. Oppression is oppression. We're still on Trisha's time. You can answer it fully. So, Trisha. So okay. when I get extorted on the side of the road and when I get told to show my papers, when I get my income stolen from me, that's oppression. And the people that are violently dominating me are the people in Washington, D.C. and they're at the Columbus State House. And those people are my enemies. If I was worried about somebody from another country coming here and trying to work for food, well, they never took a damn thing from me. Not a damn thing. And every politician and every RD absolutely did. Okay. Show me how that's wrong. So we'll go ahead and turn it to open forum now. There's no 
you are free to interrupt each other without me yeah, saying, so, "Hey, so stop she, it." She so you've got. You can still like, say so that. So you've either. got. You've got. Uh, we'll go for another three minutes. I want this to take about an hour. So, you, or I'm not three minutes. You got about six minutes to yeah, kind of go back and forth. So, go ahead. so I'd like to like to answer. Go ahead. So one thing that I think it's hilarious just is that. <laughs> is that she is arguing that she feels oppressed compared to many other countries where she would be murdered for even I didn't say that. Right I never said, said that. She said that she was did you not say you were oppressed? I would say the government oppresses me. Rewind the They're tape. Violent, dominant Rewind force. the tape. She said that she was oppressed. I think this is I whole, am oppressed so by the there government. Is, of the there United is oppression States, sure. For sure. But also what I would also argue is that why are you making it seem as though oppression and aggression is all equal? All forms of aggression are equal. I never no. said that. Don't that, put that words is, in that my is mouth. What you, that is you what you're get... arguing. 100%. I'm not arguing that I at be, all. I want to be very clear here. I'm talking about being oppressed, state force, being oppressed like Trisha is talking about. Being oppressed like Trisha is talking about. I'll wait, I'll wait till she's finished so I can talk. I never said that. I'm saying the U.S. government is oppressive around the world and to my liberty. And I'm allowed to say that because it's fucking true. Uh, you can't put words in my mouth, Tyler. That's not how this works. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. That's the end of that. That's the end. Of, okay, cool. So, um, so yeah. So to even say that, to, to even allude to that oppression is is the same. It's not. I want to be very clear. I never, I don't I wanna, do I want to be clear. Okay, forget, I don't do forget about that. I want to be clear. We'll talk about it separately. I want to be very clear that this that this type of aggression, when you're talking about taxation, I don't fucking like taxation. Right? I don't like that bullshit, right? But that is in nowhere near the same as people that Doesn't have their matter. fucking hands cut off, right? I'm not, I'm not, not worried it's about not people the same. cutting their hands off. It's not the same. Our, our I police didn't say force, that. Our police force that would maybe jail you for stealing something is not the same thing as somewhere else where they would fucking murder you for it. It's not the um, same. They will murder me. It's not the same. No, the oh, police yeah? will murder me. Oh, the police will murder you? Oh my god, they do it daily. The police, oh yeah. How many how many uh white women in America get murdered unjustly? Oh, by you're bringing race into it. No, no, no. I, I you said they okay. were murder you, so I, I want to bring that up. How many? How many just women in general? Dude, forget about race. How many women in general are wrongfully one bringing murdered? race and sex how about how about just not even let's You're just say wrongfully let's liberty. not even I'm say wrongfully speaking. murdered. You're the one who brought up that you would be murdered. So how many women? Just how many total women? Forget race. Forget why they were. How many women are murdered by police in America? Can you tell me that? I can think no, of one that was cannot. violently. I can you think cannot. of one that was violently murdered recently, for sure. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. What are the statistics? Are you sorry? I I have I have one Do woman that was Statistics matter. Oh, I have I, one I woman know. that wasn't violently murdered. But okay. we're talking, I didn't we're know talking that about numbers anecdotal. These, so these, numbers are morality. These are anecdotal. It's anecdotal evidence. So less Where are the fucking statistics? Less people having their rights violated. Less people having their rights violated is okay than more people having their rights violated. I, I, no I don't compass. offhand have how many women are shot. I do have a thousand deaths a year on the uh, police fatally shoot a thousand people a year. I don't have. Yeah, how you can go to that site. Too. A thousand. Uh, no, I looked up that thing too. And it's roughly a thousand. I think it's a little bit over, um, but it's like a thousand people that, that oh. are shot by police a year. Right. But, but that okay does not equate. That does not equate to wrongful killings. It doesn't equate to wrongful killings. It's Morality just police doesn't have killings. to do with numbers. Yeah, morality and I'm not trying to. to yeah, that's overall killing. Oh, did you hear that, Hody? Uh, morality, morality has nothing to do with numbers. But un, uh, but you want to go ahead and argue that somehow people from different cultures coming over here is going to be the same. I'm not is talking better about because they're going to contribute more to the economics. economy. False comparison. Economics. Is morality is morality not the same? Is is morality not tied to culture? That. Uh, now, if, are you asking me? I mean, that's. I, I, I would ask anybody who who would answer. Is morality not tied to culture? I think morality is very personal. I think culture has an influence on it. I guess if you're asking me. But morality, uh, morality is Tyler. subjective. Morality is totally subjective. We believe well, this is, that this is what's morally. So you're an existentialist. Right we believe that mor this is though. what morality is over here. In other countries, dude, like I talked about in my opening statement. Why would a government explain, have anything explain to, to me, morality? Explain well, to you're me. You're not a libertarian. Explain oh to me. <laughs> explain to me how you have countries like Afghan and Lebanon where they made it legal for you to be able to rape your spouse. Explain to me. That's what they believe is we moral. They believe that is morally person. right. We're not better. Oh, we're not better. 
because we don't allow the rape of of of, of innocent women here. Okay, yeah. Compare, well, listen, I'm good. I'm good with everything I had countries, to say, Hody. I'm good. Hey, Andy, Naga, comparing Naga. what other countries do to us does not make us less responsible for what we do. Everyone download my mixtape. Com <laughs> comparisons, <laughs> that's a very slippery slope. I, I could walk up to somebody that's the most evil person in the world and compare myself to them doesn't matter if I'm a shitty person, if they're a rapist or a murderer, I'm going to be better. Does that make me irresponsible for my transgressions? It does so, not. So I want this to go for- Comparisons are a weak man's argument. I want this to go for about exactly an hour. So let's go ahead. Better. Let's start our closing statements now. Trisha, you get to okay. go first. You got five. Uh, do I? You've got five I full- I to take five minutes. Uninterrupted minutes, but you can take okay, every quick, single one of this, them. Can I say this right before she goes on? Oh my gosh. I, I believe that what, uh, what Trisha is going to say in her closing statement- um, is that she wished that she never came on here to debate Ty no. Ford's money. This is over. Hold on. We're not declaring winners in the middle of this thing. Please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The winners. Even though, we, even though we get a little heated, I like Trish. I respect her. You both are like winners for together. coming on. Yeah. You guys okay. are honestly, you both done a great job. So just it's not, kidding. you got, you got 10 minutes to not mess it up. Five minutes a piece. So <laughs> okay, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take my full five minutes. Go ahead though, Trish. I actually had a really good time. Thank you, Tyler. Um, it was fun. Talking about the ins and outs, I wish we could have dug deeper on philosophy because that's um, kind of where my position has stood for. What I would say, or has been rooted in, what I would say is that there is not a strong economic argument against illegal immigration, um, and there is no moral argument, hands down, against it. And so what I would say my position lies on being morally consistent, and then it's also backed up by numbers. Um, and so it's a net benefit to our economy. Uh, I think that a lot of the position that people take on the right or Tyler considers himself a libertarian conservative, which I'm not sure. Maybe he's a banana octopus. But I consider anyway. myself your daddy. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> Maybe you, you have no idea. I do like Tyler a lot. And um, I take none of this. I don't take things personally. Trust me, I have enough people that hate me on, on like social media. So it's fine. But um, I would say. If you're going to make an argument, make it rooted in numbers and truth and morally consistent. And I think this goes to a lot of people. I used to be a conservative and I looked at false numbers and comparisons. And then I looked at the numbers as, of what Ill illegal immigrants bring to us versus our debt versus um, what they um, give to the economy and entitlement take, what they take from entitlements. And it's actually a net positive. So I have to think of when I come to that position then why am I opposed to it? And a lot of it is just fear tactics. And it's the, the mainstream media and the government making me, oh, Tyler's doing this. So I'm going to do this. Making me think <laughs> that, you know, a bunch of people are going to change my culture when, <laughs> hey, baby, uh, when literally my, my culture is to be free. Um, it's for the most people to be able to seek the most liberty around the world. And it's for me to make the most free associations with people. And uh, that's my ultimate goal. So anything that facilitates that, I'm game for. And I don't think that borders facilitate that at all. They're a large socialist bullshit idea. And I reject socialism. Therefore, I reject closed borders. That's okay. All. <laughs> Great. Trisha, Tyler. Oh, and fuck the state. Okay, that's you okay. didn't get enough swearing in on this episode. I, I feel like this is way too mild mannered. You got it, Tyler. You've got five uninterrupted minutes. Go ahead. Sure. Um, do I have uninterrupted minutes, Trisha? Is that what I have? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> firstly, I would like to salute Trisha Stewart for agreeing to discuss her opposing views with me today. Too many people look at debates as simply gotcha moments, acceptable ways to humiliate others, or to see who has the loudest voice. All of my typical joking and controversial discussions aside, what I've always been more interested in is finding actual solutions to problems uh, and ensuring our country thrives. The quintessential pillar protecting liberty. This is only possible through intellectual conversations with contrasting people. So in that regard, Trisha has my respect. I'd also like to thank We Are Libertarians for hosting me on their platform and giving me the opportunity to speak uh, what I believe to be true, protecting the culture 
of the United States from Wicked <laughs> servers. I'm certain that I will not have been able to convince uh, the entirety of listeners of my argument, perhaps not even the majority. But rest assured, when a totalitarian culture takes over the U.S. due to opening our borders without prejudice, you libertarians and anarchists <laughs> can be happy knowing that they stay purist while America turns into modern day Somalia. Now, I've seen some libertarians <laughs> condemn the Constitution completely, as, as Trisha has here today. Um, and others that would say that they would live by <laughs> the NAP instead. I think that this is hilarious. The NAP for some libertarians seems to be held as the indisputable law of the land, like the Bible is looked at by Christians. There are many, uh, many articles out there that would back up my concerns. I mean, after all, the NAP is against pollution. So does this mean that driving a non-electric car, burning uh, wood in your fireplace or smoking is a violation? What about risk? Shooting you in the head is obviously a violation, but what if I only pose the risk of harming you? If I put one bullet in a revolver, spun the cylinder, and pointed at you, is that a violation? If there is a bullet in the chamber, that's certainly a lethal threat, but if there isn't one in the chamber, the gun is no more threatening than me holding up a bottle of water to you. Does this give you the right to shoot me? If you answer yes, then I would argue that driving on the highway is a risk or flying a jet over a highly populated area is a risk. How about private party, uh, private property ignorance? If you're talking, uh, if you're walking by in a field and didn't know that that was separate from your neighbor's property that you had permission to be on, and I sneak up behind you and assault you for trespassing, am I within my right to do so under the NAP? Personally, I am not willing to risk the freedoms I currently have or the lives that I currently love to hold on to a fanatical ideology just to be the last righteous libertarian <laughs> standing. On top of asking libertarians to be more pragmatic, I would also ask listeners this question. Would you be willing to violate the NAP for you and your family's own self-interest? If you can come up with a circumstance, some situation, some occurrence uh, where you can admittedly say yes, then I ask you, how is that any different than violating the NAP to keep the borders closed and protect the liberties of the United States? <laughs> Make America great again. Trump 2020, baby. All right. Uh, both. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. For coming so on the show, calls. guys. Uh, oh, OK. This is certainly the <laughs> this, like this episode is going to be lit. This is certainly the most entertaining debate I've had, uh, wow. for sure. All the, all the people watching right now, I know, I know that they, I know that they, they know it's lit. We're you, lit. You two are both uh, de definitely uh, entertain entertainers, an equal portion with philosophers, and I appreciate you both for coming on. Thank I you for about that. Thank you for your time. I know it's a difficult subject. Once again, thank you to the audience for respecting both of our candidates. They're confronting difficult questions and lending their time and minds to us. We appreciate both of you. Um, I really appreciate you for tuning in, everybody, and keep fueling the fires of liberty. <laughs>